Eagles Entertainment. Welcome, Eagles everywhere, to the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro with you. And the Eagles, one more week to go here in this modified offseason program. Along the way, we've had a chance to go out and watch the practices. And really, the practices are kind of more urgent walkthroughs. No pads, no contact, a lot of technique, a lot of emphasis on knowing where you're supposed to be as head coach Nick Sirianni and his staff put in the schemes, the X's and O's for the offense, defense, and special teams. This wraps up at the end of next week, June 5th, the final day for the Eagles on the field. And then they take a long break before training camp begins in late July at the NovaCare Complex. Got some news for you about training camp. The Eagles will hold two public practices at Lincoln Financial Field. Sunday, August 8th at 7 p.m. And then a second public practice on Sunday, August 22nd at 7 p.m. So that is fun stuff. Fans can purchase public practice general admission tickets for $10 by visiting Ticketmaster. And there's also an option to purchase a $25 VIP ticket that provides fans with a special on-field experience at the practices. All ticket proceeds for the public practices will benefit the Eagles Autism Foundation and its mission to fund innovative autism research and programming. Seating at Lincoln Financial Field will be on a first come first serve basis. All individuals over the age of two will require a ticket for entry and for both public practices, there are no ticket limitations per customer. Parking will be free. Training camp. Oh, Presented by Independence Blue Cross begins officially when the players report to the NovaCare Complex on Tuesday, July 27th. Football is in the air. Make sure you're with us on PhiladelphiaEagles.com, our official app, and our social media channels as we announce exact times and dates for all of the practice sessions. Also, circle the date and the time. I know you will. On Wednesday, June 2nd at 10 a.m., Tickets available for purchase. Single game tickets available for purchase. Visit Ticketmaster.com. Four ticket limit per household. Fans are encouraged to use Ticketmaster and get there as soon as they go on sale, like immediately, okay? We are so excited to have everybody back at Lincoln Financial Field. Full stadiums ahead with a great home schedule in 2021. In this Eagles Insider Podcast, we're gonna visit with Jalen Rager in just a bit. He was last year's first round draft pick, 31 receptions, had one touchdown receiving, one punt return for a touchdown. Now he's back for year two, and what is different about Jalen Rager? We'll find out in just a few minutes. First up, Ryan Kerrigan, reported to the NovaCare Complex on Monday, has been on the practice field, and I got him for an exclusive one-on-one interview. Here he is, the new Eagle, Ryan Kerrigan. For 10 years, we absolutely hated the guy when he played for Washington. He was number 91 then, and he was terrorizing the Philadelphia Eagles. He joins me now. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro. Happy to welcome in Ryan Kerrigan, the newest Philadelphia Eagle. Ryan, hello. How are you? Welcome to the Eagles defense. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, so, okay, so uh, Roger Clemens leaves the Red Sox to go with the Yankees. Um, Brett Favre leaves... Green Bay to go with Minnesota. Does Ryan Kerrigan leaving Washington to play against, uh, play with the rival Philadelphia Eagles, does that rate in your mind? And, and how much fun are you having with all this? I mean, I don't know if I'm Roger Clemens or Brett Favre, <laughs> but if you're going to call me that, thank you very much. But, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it was definitely uh, – I'm, I'm sure it took a lot of people by surprise given that, you know, I played in Washington for, for my 10 previous seasons. But um, this is – it felt right, honestly, from the second my visit here started. So this is uh, – this is where I wanted to be, and, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. What kind of reaction have you gotten both from Washington fans, who I know you have been really close with, as well as Eagles fans? I mean, the Eagles fans have been pumped. They, uh, you know, they've been nothing but you know encouraging on you know in social media and whatnot. And as you can imagine, some of the Washington fans that were were not too happy. I mean, a lot of them. I, I think the vast majority were you know were wishing me well and saying good luck. But there was there was certainly a couple that were that were none too pleased. 
Ryan, what was it like for you after 10 years in Washington to be in the position where you were kind of choosing your next destination and, and why Philadelphia? It was it was odd at first. I mean, you're not you're. I'd never been in free a free agent throughout my ten year career, so it was a, a different experience. But um, I think Philadelphia. I mean, I it, just from the moment I, I set foot in, in Novacare, it really just felt like it felt like the place that I was supposed to be at. Like there, like everyone was super nice, super welcoming. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to work with Coach Gannon and the de and the defense here because I feel like they're gonna you know really put us in good positions to succeed defensively, and so. Um, this was definitely the, the right choice for me. Is it similar to what happened coming out of high school, being recruited, going to Purdue? Is that a similar kind of feeling? A little bit, yeah. You kind of, kind of, you know, brought back some memories from uh, being recruited out of high school, and so, uh, and you know, I'm, I made the right choice in going to Purdue then, so I, I'm believing I made the right choice now in going to going to Philly. You touched on it a bit when you met the media earlier. Um, you know Philadelphia as well as any opposing player could, so. What was it like coming to Lincoln Financial Field? You know, I know how the buses come in, and I know how the Eagles fans are waiting for you, but just from that all the way through, the process of playing against the Eagles, and even when it, the Eagles played Washington down there, there were always tons of Eagles fans in the stands. Yeah, the fans definitely travel really well. That was always a very, a very noticeable thing when, whenever we played the Eagles, but... You know, coming to Philadelphia, it was tough. I mean, we knew it was going to be a hostile environment, that the fans weren't going to like us, and they were going to let us know that they don't like us. And, and what, I, what I saw that is, is that team cares about their – those fans care about their home team, and so that's why I'm excited to be a part of it now. 95 and a half career sacks. What has been the key to your success, do you think? Um, good fortune. I mean, I've been really lucky to, you know, I've been able to play a lot of football, been able to play a lot of seasons and a lot of snaps within those seasons, and – um, I, I, I like to think I work hard too. I mean, I, uh, I do a lot to take care of my body and, and you know, make sure I'm ready to go for not only Sunday, but the practice days as well. Cause I know that's when you really kind of hone in on your craft. So, um, you know, I've, I've really tried to put my all into this game and I hope to hope that shows this, this season. Ryan, I always enjoyed talking to Lane Johnson prior to games against Washington, working against you. And he always really gave a great technical breakdown of what makes you such a great football player. So I'm going to ask you the same thing about Lane. First, how was it playing against him? And what makes him such a great right tackle? It's not fun playing against him, I'll tell you that. I, uh, you know, I, every year when the schedule come, would come out, I'd always you know, kind of look at, okay, I play Philly this day and I play Philly this day because I knew I had, those were my matchups with Lane. And, you know, that, I mean, he's an unbelievable right tackle. His, to, be that, to be able to move the way he does at his size, I mean, it, it makes it really tough for, for us on the edge. And um, he's very technically sound with his sets and you know, with his hands and his timing of, with his hands. And so he's a really tough matchup. And I'm glad, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I won't be seeing him on Sundays this season. And he said that you never, ever talk trash. You don't talk to players on the field? I don't really talk trash. I mean, I don't really got any. If I could, if I was good at it, maybe I would. But I just, I, I'm, I'm just, I just keep it, keep it to myself. Ryan, what do you think about early impressions here about the defense uh, and about what this group can possibly accomplish? I know it's way too early to really get into it, but just early thoughts. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to get going. I mean, there, I, I, you know, talking to Coach Gannon, I really feel like you know he's going to allow us to really, really succeed on the edge and on the, you know, on the, you know, line of scrimmage, which. That's uh, that's all. That's all I can really ask for as a guy that plays on the line, line of scrimmage is to be put in a position that's that's uh, going to allow us to be successful, and that's what I think Coach Gannon's going to do. You've played the game with such great intensity. Were you born that way? Did you develop a love of the game at a really early age? I mean, where does that come from? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely developed a love for the game at an early age. I mean, I just remember my uh, watching football with my dad when I was a kid, and I could see how much he loved watching football, and I think that kind of passed off onto me. But then. When I got to college, I remember my defensive line coach, uh, Terrell Williams, he said, the best compliment you can get as a, as a defensive lineman is, man, that guy plays hard. And so I really took that to heart and, and kind of you know, tried to make it so that people looked at me and said, man, that guy plays hard. Ryan, all those years in Washington, a lot of distractions, ups and downs. Uh, so give us the lesson here. How do you keep your focus on your craft? Because that's, I mean, that's, that's how you're able to stay in the league is, is by your performance and how are you, are you a positive contributor to the team, not only on Sundays with your play, but are you, are you a good practice player? Are you doing the right things, you know, away from the field? Are you, you know, you getting enough sleep? Are you staying up late doing things like, and so I was, I, I was just always, you know, very, you know, 
focus driven of, you know, okay, I gotta, I gotta do these things to help me succeed on Sunday. Ryan, last year, I mean, tough year, no fans in the stands. I know you have such a great connection. What was it like not having, not feeding off of the, the crowd and, and then kind of not being able to, you know, look up into the stands one more time with the Washington fans who've been so supportive of you? It was tough for sure. I mean, it, I, I remember our first game against Philadelphia last year, and that was, you know, our first taste of not having fans in the stands. And it was, it was bizarre. I mean, there was, it was so quiet. And I, I really noticed it after the national anthem, because normally after the national anthem, you know, every, the fans cheer and everybody, and you kind of really get ready for kickoff. And when the national anthem finished in that first game last year, it was just crickets. And we were like, man, okay, this is, this is real. There are no fans here. So that was a, uh, that was, uh, that was disappointing, but I'm glad we're, you know, we're trending in the way to get fans back in the stands this fall. Last one for you, way away from the game of football. I know you love dogs. You've put a lot of time and effort into the rescue of dogs, bulldogs in particular. First, could you tell me the story of involving your dogs in your wedding and then the, the rescue part of it? Why is that such a big deal to you? Um, it's a big deal to me because, I mean, my, my wife is very, very passionate about uh, animal rescue in particular, bulldog rescue. She... Uh, she uh, definitely brought that, you know, kind of brought that sphere into my life, and I've and I've really been thankful that she did because it's been really rewarding to see some of the, the the homes that were you're able to put put uh, put these dogs who are born into tough conditions in. Um, but having our dogs in our wedding, um, you know, my my wife, you know, she she was she's absolutely just enamored with with all of our dogs, and she and so she was like, you know, they gotta they gotta be involved in our wedding in some capacity. So they, uh, you know, they we had them walk down the aisle, you know, and they had little you know, you know, tuxedo collars on and they, they were looking the part. And, um, of course one of them, you know, had to just, you know, you know, make a, make a, a potty, take a potty break right down the middle of the aisle on the, <laughs> uh, as they were walking down. So, um, but that made for a great story and they're, uh, they're definitely a huge part of our lives. Awesome. Great stuff. Ryan Kerrigan, thank you so much. Welcome to Philadelphia and thanks for taking the time with me today. Thank you. You know, you watch the Eagles at practice and you really but go, wow, this group of wide receivers is so young. Your veterans are Greg Ward, third year. J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, third year. Travis Fulgham, third year. Whew. Three players are second-year players, including Jalen Rager, last year's first-round draft pick. Injuries limited him to just 11 games, the 31 receptions. The numbers paled in comparison to what the Eagles hoped for Rager, certainly what he wanted. And a new coaching staff is here, and they're working with all of these young players, and they're working with Rager. And here is offensive coordinator Shane Steichen talking about the young receivers and also kind of the new combination, maybe the pairing of the future, Rager and 2021 first-round draft pick Devontae Smith. Yeah, I, I think that's that's us on coaches. We got to develop these guys uh, week in and week out. And Aaron Moorhead uh, so far has done a heck of a job with these wide receivers. Um, so we're we're looking forward to working with the young guys and and getting them reps and getting them involved in the new system and really honing in on the details and the fundamentals and the technique of the position. Uh, to make them successful. And I think if we can do that with them, they're going to become good players. Jalen Rager is an explosive football player. Uh, obviously, he showed up on film, had some big punt returns, had some big catches. But his explosiveness and his ability to catch and get yak, um, it, it, it's, it's awesome. So super excited to work with him. Um, he's going to be a good player. And then I think uh, Devontae, when you watch Devontae coming out, I mean, this guy, his his first step off the line of scrimmage and his smoothness coming in and out of breaks, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, the guy had three games, I want to say, over 200 yards receiving, um, and I, the touchdowns, I want to say, was over the 20s. I mean, he won the Heisman for a reason. This guy is a, a talented football player uh, that we look forward to working with. All right, as for Rager, he is approaching 2021 full of confidence. Into his second season, wide receiver Jalen Rager joins me. Jalen, how are you? And fill in this sentence for me. Year two will be great for Jalen Rager because? Hell of an improvement. Why? Um, I would say just because the, the way I'm going about it being intentional and uh, it's my second year, you know, it's not a big, it's not a, it's not like, oh, this is my fourth year, but it's my second year. So I kind of know how things go. Um, and I really put, you know, put a lot of things in my toolbox. And like I said, just the, the main thing is being intentional. You know, it's interesting. They always say that the biggest jump for players is from year one to year two. Right. Is it because you've 
been through it before and you kind of know what to expect, what's in front of you? Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing, how you go, you know, every level. I feel like when I was a freshman in college, my sophomore year, that's when I blew, like, you know, I blew the top off of things. So it was like, you know, you just literally sit here and you grow. You know, it's just, it's with everything. That's just like how you go from a job. You go from being a, you know, the the person taking the calls to being a supervisor to now you're, you, you know, so it's just, it's levels to it. And I feel like, you know, I'm going to make a big jump this year. And like I said, just being very intentional with everything I do. Is it just consistency, Jalen? Because last year there were moments, big punt return, big catch for touchdowns, explosiveness That's, with the football yeah. in your hands. I mean, that, th- it wasn't like a physical thing. Like, hey, you're not good enough physically to play football. You were better on the field when you got the ball in your hand. Right. Is it just being consistent? That's exactly what it is. Like I said, and then being available. So being available and being consistent. Um, like I said, you know, just the best ability is, is availability. And me being consistent, you know, like I said, I have a job to do. And, you know, just, you know, I, I don't I don't look at it bad. Like I look, everybody wants wants to see me catch, you know, 80 balls and, do, you know, so it, it's, like I said, it's being consistent and everybody want to see me succeed. And when it doesn't happen, it's like, you know, everybody has that question, why? But then it's like, you know, like I said, I'm right with them. So, like I said, I want to be consistent, you know, week in and week out. And, you know, whenever my numbers call, I'll make the most of it. It's such an interesting wide receiver room. It's so young. How do you guys kind of overcome that lack of experience and grow together? No excuses. We got a job to do, make it happen. So we can sit here and say we're young and we don't have enough veterans. But, I mean, at the end of the day, that's why they brought us here. So, obviously, they feel like we have those qualities. So, like I said, we can't make excuses. We just have to make it happen. I think it's going to be fun to watch the wide receivers. Interchangeable pieces. Exactly. Create good matchups. I mean, how exciting is that for you? Very. Like I said, that's the best thing about being being in the position we're in. Every, make everybody interchangeable. So, where we can break the huddle and each one of us can go to a different spot every play. How difficult is it to go from the d- three different spots? Fans may not understand the skill set required to do all three spots. Um, It's really all about want to. It's learning the whole system, not just learning what you got. And honestly, that's what I learned from being a rookie. Like, you know, yeah, I knew what I had at this position, but it's like, okay, knowing why I have this. Okay, I have this route. I know what's coming underneath me. So it's just, like I said, you just know, knowing the whole system, it allows you to play fast because you know, okay, my route may be to get G. Ward open, or I'm in the inside, I might need to get Trav open, or I'm in the inside, I need to get Smitty open, or Smitty need to get me open. So it's like, it's all about timing and then just knowing where to be. Jalen, there's been a lot of changes here in the offseason. Right. Um, how do you how do you kind of focus all that stuff out and, and really work on your, your own craft? Exactly like you said, okay. focus it out and work on my craft. Because honestly, those are things I can't control. So I really just got to, you know, take it for what it is and then keep elevating. All right, so we're going to have a big break here from the end of this workout period, this phase two, this offseason program to training camp. What will you be doing? What will you, be, what will you really be focusing on for you physically? Um, honestly, just continue to what I, you know, watch what I put in my body and then, like I said, being intentional. So as far as like route, route things and, you know, route depth and really just fine tuning everything that, you know, I built, you know, from last season on, you know, just try to keep progressing. Jalen Rager, thank you so much for joining me. Can't wait to see you on the field at training camp this summer at the Novacare Complex. Best of luck to you. Thank you, my guy. Thank you. That will do it for this Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Thank you all for listening. Thanks to Peter Kelly, Ray Doyle, Trevor Hayes for their work. And if you have a moment to give us a review, please do so. It's in your episode notes in your podcast library. Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro saying thanks for joining everyone. As always, have yourselves a great Eagles day and fly, Eagles, fly. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles! Welcome to Season 2 of the Return Game Podcast. Birds, Boys, and Bad Blood. Presented by NovaCare Rehabilitation and hosted by me, Rob Ellis, and Derek Gunn. When it comes to the birds and the boys, you think you know the whole story. But there's more. So much more. And we're about to uncover it all. It didn't take long to figure out that Philadelphia Eagles fans hated the Dallas Cowboys. Return Game, an Eagles Entertainment original. Subscribe now wherever you listen to podcasts.